Welcome everyone to the big clash between Nodirbek Abdul Satarov and Pragnananda in the sixth round of the Prague Masters. Nodirbek and Pragnananda first faced off against each other in 2014 at World Under 10 Championships. Ten years later, they are two of the best players in the world. Prague has the black pieces, Nodirbek the white. The Uzbek GM opens with 1 e4. What is Prag going to respond with? He plays pawn to e5. Very solid, but I'm sure that the game is going to get very exciting because both of these players are uncompromising. They like to fight till the very end and they never really like to make short draws. So knight comes out to c6. The question is, will Norderbeck go for the Italian? No, he goes for the Spanish today with bishop to b5. And Prag now is going to play... A6, the main move, not going for the Berlin. A6, bishop A4 is the very likely move here to be made. Yes, he plays his bishop back. And now the main line is knight to F6. But Prague goes knight E7. Slightly surprising. And in fact, Prague has played this for the first time today. So Norderbeck pauses a bit and then quickly castles. Because generally in the opening, Norderbeck is so well prepared. Prague goes knight g6. He's now overprotecting the pawn on e5. But actually the knight on g6 is slightly weirdly placed. You know, it's not normal to have it over there in the opening. c3 by Norderbeck. He wants to play d4. Prague instantly strikes in the center with d5. Pawn takes pawn. And now the queen is likely to take here. You can notice that with the knight on g6 defending d e5, and the pawn on c3 that stops knight c3 to attack the queen, Prague is quite happy to bring his queen in the center of the board. Now the bishop comes to the beautiful diagonal attacking the queen. The queen has to move from d5. Where will it go? It goes to d3. Just moving in to the center of the board, telling Norderbeck you can't push your pawn. But Norderbeck asks the queen to move away. Bishop c2 played. And now... The queen has to move back. So Prague plays queen to d6. So he's brought his queen back here. Uh, and it is quite well placed. And this is all opening theory for Prague. And you can see Norderbeck is slightly bleeding on time. Because this is a new position for him. He plays the very logical Muruki one. Preparing d4. Bishop e7 looks like the main move. But Prague goes for a new move now. Bishop e6. This hasn't been played before and d4 played here. Wow. Now, Prague can take this pawn. It's one of the main moves here, but actually, he prefers bishop e7. Because if you took, there were some insane complications with take, take and knight f7, which are fine for black. But Prague wasn't able to find a way through them. So, Norderbeck now plays bishop e3 and Prague now takes the pawn. He takes d4 and knight takes on d4 here. I think taking the knight makes a lot of sense. You don't want to be giving up your bishop. So Prague takes it. And what has actually transpired here is a very symmetrical pawn structure with three pawns each on each side of the board. Black now castles it out here. So black is pretty fine. And now knight d2 played here by Nodirbek. Maybe he wants to go knight e4, maybe knight f3. Pawn comes up to c5, hitting the bishop here in the center and Norderbeck goes back to e3. So even though the pawn structure is symmetrical, there are quite a few imbalances here in the position. Queen comes out to h5. Now looking in this direction, also looking here, Prag goes rook d8, centralizing his rook and g3. Maybe not the best move here by no, they're back because it weakens these light squares and queen c8 threatening bishop g4 would be a great, great idea. But Prague goes rook d5 attacking the queen from here and now the queen needs to move back on e2. And uh, that's very likely, yes, he goes back to e2. So bishop b3 maybe is one of the ideas, knight c4 can happen, b5 played by Prague. In a way, gaining space, but also creating a target to be hit later on. F4 played by Norderbeck. One mm -hmm. of the plans is to go F5, so Prague stops it with Queen C8. 
if you think about this position white has more space the knight on g6 looks silly but at the same time the king is slightly open who's go this is going to benefit and norderbeck plays a4 hitting the queen side of prague these two bishops angling here this is making slightly difficult prague's task of how to continue he goes queen f2 and now have to be careful about f5 trapping this bishop so the bishop comes back offering a trade and norderbeck does not first takes on b5 if you take he will take back with the knight so pawn takes pawn has happened and now norderbeck simply says to prague i don't want to trade look at my two bishops here you are in some real trouble prague says i'm going to persist the trade i'm going to go after you well norderbeck says sorry now you can't trade anymore well how does prague continue here now is the question his knight is very very bad he needs to find a space for his knight knight h8 is not somewhere you want to go but b4 this is a nice move trying to sort of simplify the queen side pawn comes up to c4 and now prague goes bishop f6 hitting the b2 pawn but now knight e4 is a classy move and i think norderbeck will play it because it defends the pawn on b2 no he is tempted by rook a8 to hit the queen but now the queen can simply move away and that's exactly what prague is planning to do he's thinking a bit and he plays queen b7 nice move there now the point is that the rooks are going to get traded and perhaps it's only helped black so knight e4 should have been tried there but rook d8 taken once again the b2 pawn is hanging so norderbeck comes in with his knight and now if you move the bishop c5 is hanging three times but prague has something prepared he comes in queen d3 and he's okay if norderbeck spoils his structure because the c4 pawn is hanging norderbeck is not tempted by that he takes the pawn on c5 and now prague must take the pawn back on c4 so equal material and the game is quite intense but it's still equal knight comes in hitting the queen looking at this maybe some day the bishop can jump to d5 prague moves into b3 pressurizing the b2 pawn what a game this is move or move both of them are playing the best moves here bishop f3 played and now prague goes h6 just making sure that his back rank is safe norderbeck plays bishop h5 just putting pressure here maybe the pawn can be taken on b2 here because if rook b1 there is queen c3 hitting here threatening queen c1 later queen d5 oh they are repeating maybe the game ends in a draw now but clearly both of them are fighters prague repeats for another time will norderbeck go bishop h5 is prague just provoking him seems like it rook e2 a mistake has been made by norderbeck because rook d6 bishop d6 check and you lose the bishop there two pieces for a rook look at prague he's calm down he's taken on d6 but norderbeck has an intermezzo he gives a check and he says to prague now my d1 square is controlled by the bishop so you won't be able to play queen d1 check Pragnananda now moves his king to h7. What does he have in mind? Because after bishop d6, hasn't he just given up an entire exchange? Bishop d6, there's no queen d1. Well, Prague now finds a simply brilliant move. Bishop d4. Look at Norderbeck's face there. He's surprised. Queen takes d4 happens. Queen f3. On g2, there is a mate. On f1, there is a mate. And this is actually trouble time queen has to come back to f2 and through another route pragnananda finds this combination with a check and the bishop falls what a brilliant combination there norderbeck made one inaccuracy and prag latched on to it and now he has two pieces for a rook and this king on g1 is very very weak of course there's some technical work to be done here but clearly it's not so difficult prag goes back with the bishop here look at how he first stabilizes his position there's no hurry the bishop controls the pawn and now knight comes in maybe to come to f5 and later on you can even push the pawn to b3 so queen moves up offering a trade norderbeck understands that his best chances lie if the queens are traded and if he goes into the end game but of course pragnananda doesn't really intend to trade queens well he does it <laughs> he does it prag is like i can even win this in the end game rook takes e3 and now pawn push to b3 
is maybe the best move. Yes, this actually now the pawn is perennially guarded and pawn on b2 is a weakness. So the king comes up to f2 and now <coughs> knight f5. No, he plays g6. So he wants to push his pawn to h5. Pawn to g4. You can't take the pawn because knight on e7 is hanging and king g7 played. So here pawn to h3 has been played and black now goes king to f6 rook e4 played by Noderbek Abdul Satarov and how is Pragnananda going to make progress is the question well Prag gives us the answer he plays h5 and he tells if you play g5 you will be giving up the f5 square to me so Noderbek plays his king to g3 and now knight to d5 this is nicely placed king h4 comes in and now how is Prag going to continue he takes on g4 pawn takes on g4 and Prag just goes back now the threats look at this bishop g4 king g4 knight f6 check and you are in a winning pawn end game so Noderbeck was forced to push his pawn to g5 but step by step, Prague is making progress. Progress by Prague. Now bishop c2. A b2 is hanging. Rook c4. Look at, look at this. You put your bishop here. Then the rook can never defend this pawn. And then you slowly bring your knight over. The best is just put your knight from e3 to d1. And just this pawn falls. So Prague is doing it in style now. Nodirbek does not have any real ideas or moves. Prag moves in with 93, 91 is coming in. Norderbeck really, really played well out of the opening. He fought, but one mistake and somehow slightly over ambition there when they were repeating has led him to this position where he is completely lost. There was no chance of recovery. He offers his hand in resignation. I think this is the first ever time after the World Under 10 Championship that Prague has beaten Norderbeck in classical chess. Rest of the games have ended in draws. So Norderbeck is still searching for his first classical win against Prague. But what a battle this is between these two youngsters. I'm sure we'll be seeing them fighting off against each other in many candidates and also in the World Championship matches in the years to come.